In 2013, scientists attempted to recreate the evolution of the universe from shortly after the Big Bang until today. This simulation, which took 19 million CPU hours to produce, started with a predicted amount of matter, dark matter and dark energy that should have existed shortly after the Big Bang. The simulation was allowed to run to see if these perimeters that were set at the beginning can produce the galaxies and the universe's structure we see today. What you are looking at here is limited to a 32 million light year cube of the simulation. The expansion of the universe is considered with simply gas density and temperature visible. This is the intergalactic medium. Even though space is a vacuum, there are still a few particles in every cubic centimeter of space. Blues are the coldest regions here, whites are the hottest. As gas particles are drawn together by their own gravity and that of dark matter, the gas clumps and over the course of millions of years coalesces into galaxies, which increases the gas's temperature drastically. What you'll immediately notice is that there appear to be explosions coming from the densest clumps. But galaxies exploding? That can't be right, I surely would have heard of that before. But remember, this is the intergalactic gas temperature we are seeing. And each second passing in the video is a few million real-time years. Quasars, or extremely active black holes, are the brightest objects in the universe, emitting more electromagnetic radiation than entire galaxies combined. When a quasar lights up, its rapid increase in radiation blasts into space, ionizing the intergalactic gas as it expands out, heating it up to extreme temperatures. This is known as quasar mode, or active galactic nuclei feedback. Black holes don't remain as quasars for lengthy periods of time. Rather, quasars are the result of a large amount of mass falling into them, lighting them up and causing them to eject huge amounts of mass and energy. They'll remain as quasars as long as there is matter being fed into them. Although, you may wonder, how can a black hole emit anything? Don't they absorb it all? And the answer is yes. It is in fact the accretion disk around the quasar that is so energetic and luminous. A black hole's accretion disk is the result of matter passing by, being ripped apart and sucked into orbit. These supermassive black holes often have billions of solar masses. The gravity around them is immense. As the material in the accretion disk orbits and falls inwards, the friction from the material in the disk rubbing together creates energy so intense that a quasar can be thousands of times brighter than our Milky Way. In fact, a quasar's host galaxy is often too dim to detect next to the bright quasar. Although, techniques with the Hubble Space Telescope have allowed a few of these host galaxies to be seen too. Quasars could light up from collisions of galaxies, when suddenly an abundance of matter falls into the supermassive black hole, although this doesn't always happen. You'll also notice these jets coming from the quasar's poles. These extend well beyond the galactic disk and can be seen illuminating other galaxies and dust clouds like a spotlight. Quasars themselves are bright, but when these jets are pointed towards us, they are known as blazars. The jets are believed to be powered by the black hole's magnetic structure, and they can carry high energy plasma away from the black hole at almost the speed of light. The days of quasars and blazars are thought to be over. The closest quasar to us is 600 million light years away, and thus was going on 600 million years ago. However, you'll notice that the explosions in the simulation don't let up in this video as time passes. This comes from the last in the active galactic nuclei family of black holes, radio galaxies. Typical quasars and blazars are so bright that they light up in all frequencies of the electromagnetic spectrum uniformly. Radio galaxies originate from black holes that, unsurprisingly, 
are brighter in radio wavelengths. These explosions now come from radio galaxies, and this is known as radio mode feedback. The simulation stops at the present day. Now, while impressive, the simulation isn't perfect. For instance, it could only simulate a trillion particles compared to the countless number of particles in the equivalent section of space. Also, we don't have a perfect knowledge of the perimeters of the universe, and so there were certain mistakes evident in the model, like the overprediction of star formation. There are plans to try this again at some point, with an updated understanding. Being able to model how the universe evolved can give us a confirmation about how we believe it formed, and this is of great interest to scientists. Let's see what future results will bring. So, can galaxies explode? Not in the conventional sense, but if you are talking about exploding with electromagnetic radiation, then absolutely. Thanks for watching. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe for more space videos. All the best, and see you next time.